Did Jesus deny ever asking anybody to worship him? So at 5, verse 116 and 117, I've got something to say about Jesus being worshipped. Let's take a look at Quran.com and see what it has to say. So as I read this, I'm going to use the English translation, obviously, and I'm going to include the words that have been added that uh, weren't in the original Arabic, but have been added by the translator to uh, add to the meaning to, so it's easier to understand for those uh, thickies who only speak English. So here goes. And on judgment day, Allah will say, Oh Jesus, son of Mary, did you ever ask the people to worship you and your mother as gods beside Allah? He will answer, Glory be to you. How could I ever say what I had no right to say? If I had said such a thing, you would have certainly known it. You know what is hidden and within me, and I do not know what is within you. You indeed, you alone, are the knower of all unseen. And verse 117 says, I never told them anything except what you ordered me to say. Worship Allah, my Lord and your Lord. And I was a witness over them as long as I remained amongst them. But when you took me, you were the witness over them and you are the witness over all things. These two verses are very clear in what they say. Firstly, in the conversation with Allah, Jesus denies that he ever asked anyone to worship him. Then he declares that he knows that he doesn't have the right to say such a thing. And it implies that even if he had such a thought, then Allah would have known about it. Because he can see into every man's heart. Then he goes on to say that he only told them what Allah had ordered him to say, which was worship Allah, my Lord and your Lord. Now both the Bible and the Quran are very clear on this, that worship belongs only to God, stroke Allah, and to nobody else. So let's have a look and see what the Bible has to say. So I'm going to have a look at Exodus 20, what is commonly known as the Ten Commandments, and see what that has to say. Note that this is a translation from the original Hebrew language into English. And I have gone with the New International Version. Though if you want to have a look at any other English translations, you'll see that it says the same thing. We actually do have possibly hundreds of translations into English alone, which while it may seem a little excessive, it does mean that you can easily check out the verses for consistency. So starting at the top, I'm going to read down to verse 6. And God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an image in the form of anything in heaven, above or on the earth beneath or in the waters below. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. For, the, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing the children for the sin of the parents to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me but showing love to a thousand generations of those who love me and keep my commandments. As we can see, we get a very clear meaning that it's only the mighty God that is to be worshipped and nobody else. On a slight aside, it also, uh, also note here the use of God's name, Yahweh is used, though you can't tell from reading the script what we do in the um, English translations. Well, the Jews did it first, to be honest, in their writings. Instead of writing the name Yahweh, which is God's name, it means I am what I am. They use, um, you see the word Lord in uppercase letters, L-O-R-D. It's done in uppercase and quite often it's written at half height, like the, the height of a lowercase. But anyway, that's the subject for another video because it's quite relevant. So I'll uh, move on from that for now. I just want to read two more verses. One is Revelation 22, verse 8 to 9, and the other is Matthew 4 to 10. Reading from Revelation 22, verse 8 and 9, I, John, am the one who heard and saw these things. When I had heard and seen them, I fell down to worship at the feet of the angel who had been showing them to me. But he said to me, don't do that. I am a fellow servant with you and with your fellow prophets and with all those who keep the words of this scroll. Worship God. So this occurs when John the writer of Revelation tries to worship the angel that was giving him the revelations. Note that the angel rebukes him and tells him to worship God only. And the other reading is from Matthew 10, uh, 4 verse 10, sorry, but I'm going to start at verse 8 to give it its full context. 
Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendour. All this I will give you, he said, if you will bow down and worship me. And Jesus said to him, Away from me, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. So the significance here is again that Jesus is showing that uh, only he should only worship God. It's showing that he actually understands that. So he's not ignorant of that fact. He knows only worship God. So far, everything is pretty straightforward. But we have a problem. In the New Testament, there's many places where Jesus not only it receives worship, but fails to put a stop to it, which is different to the example of the angel in the book of Revelation. Let's have a look at some examples. The first reading is from Matthew 28, verse 9. Suddenly, Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet and worshipped him. And that was the two Marys. That was after Jesus had been resurrected from the dead. Next reading is Matthew 14, 33. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. Matthew 14, 33, as I said. And that was the disciples. That was after Jesus had um, come to them walking on the water, on the Sea of Galilee. Um, calmed the storm. Uh, Peter had a goat walking on the water and started to sink and all those things. And when he got back into the boat, they said, Truly, you are the Son of God. And after they worshipped him. So the third reading is Matthew 2, 11. And coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of frankincense and myrrh. And that was the Magi. So that was when uh, Jesus was a baby, and the three wise men, as it's commonly called, but three, uh, well, we don't even know if it was three, to be honest. That came out of a poem that somebody wrote. So the Magi we just know plural, came to him and brought him gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh, and they worshipped him. Obviously, Jesus couldn't stop that one on that occasion. I must be honest there, but um, but it still happened. Then the, um, the last reading is John 9.38. Then the man said, Lord, I believe, and he worshipped him. And that was the blind man that was healed. He's had his eyesight restored. And then there's also the verses you can check out, Luke 24, 52, and Matthew 28, 17. But there's other occasions as well that imply that he's received worship from demons, for example. But there's too many to go through. So these are the main ones I thought I'd share with you. The message is very clear and very strong. Jesus received worship and he fully knew the relevance and yet made no attempt to stop it. This is the same Jesus that the Bible attests was perfect and without sin. Now Muslims amongst you may say, ah yes but the Bible has been corrupted. Let's analyse that for a minute. Say you've got, you, you're in the possession of the perfect, the perfect um, New Testament, no corruption in it whatsoever and in that non-corrupt version nowhere does it say that Jesus is God, nowhere does Jesus say worship me, nowhere is, does Jesus receive worship. Okay, but you want to change it for some strange reason uh, and raise the status of Jesus from being just a, a man, a prophet, up to being um up to being god okay now how would you get that message over if you were going to corrupt god's word would you just put some little hidden messages in there that are, if you're clever enough to do that that is that would imply it um well not more than imply it when you read it it would state it quite clearly that jesus received worship therefore hence jesus is god now if you did would you just do that or would you go the whole way Obviously, you're going to go the whole way and you're going to put some verses in there that is clear as day that declare where Jesus said, I am God. I am God. Worship me. Um, thank you for worshipping me. You know, whatever way you would do it. Of course you would. That's what you would do. You want to make it, your message as clear as possible so that nobody can be in any doubt about it. So it means clear as day. Okay, of course you would do that. So really, that basically destroys the argument that um, that it's been corrupted because if you're going to corrupt it you'd corrupt it the whole way and not just put little hidden messages in there so so again thank you for listening and please feel free to comment below thank you